I am counting you getting an 80% or higher on both study guides as an assessment in math lab. Because really you've had like two hours today alone to work on it. And they've been available since last week. And you can still continue working on them later as you should because the test is tomorrow. You should be trying to get 80% or higher on both because that means you'll probably do well on the test tomorrow, which is worth way more points. So keep that in mind. Uh, one of the questions that was asked about, John, do you remember what number it was? Okay, so this one, because I, again, I closely align the study guides to the actual tests. Really, the only thing that's different are like the numbers. So this one's number five on your puzzle piece study guide. Um, I'm not a fan of this question. Because there's too many, and this is true for the test as well, there's too many drag and drop options, and it makes it hard to determine what their step one could have been. Because normally, I always tell you to do this first if you see it in the problem. What do I usually tell you to do first? I usually say, if you see that you can distribute, do that first. But this was given to you as a hint for this way that they solved it. They didn't distribute first. Now my philosophy is, and this is how I'm going to grade you tomorrow for this question on your test. If you can tell me what x equals on your test, not necessarily the study guys, but if you can tell me what x equals and it's right and you show some work, not just like, oh, I need good moves, um, then I will give you full points for that test. So if you want to solve it by distributing and doing all the things, go ahead. But the reason why I don't like this question is because the person who solved this and you're filling out the steps for what they did is they eliminated the fraction first, which is a good strategy, but like it's not necessarily what I would do first. But they wanted to eliminate the fraction. How can you make any number not a fraction anymore? What could you do to make it no longer a fraction? Like the three fourths. Say I just want to make the three fourths a three. How do I make it no longer three fourths? What does the fraction bar usually tell you to do? What math? To divide, what would be opposite of dividing? So here's how you can break up any fraction. You could multiply it by the denominator because that would cancel it out. Three fourths times four would just be three. To say it's like seven eighths, what would I have to multiply it by to make it just seven? Eight seven. We multiply it by eight to make it just seven. If you want to make it one, then yeah, multiply it by the reciprocal. But this time you just want to make it no longer a number. So if you multiply by the denominator, that makes it just whatever the numerator is. And that's what they did. And I think that's not a bad step. It's a step you can do that sometimes makes it easier. But I don't think that's what most people logically think to do, which is why tomorrow when you take your test, if you can just tell me what x is supposed to equal and show some work, I'll give you the answer. Okay? But this is how they solved it. They multiplied the entire thing by 4 so that they can make this side no longer a fraction. So that makes this just three on the left side. So they multiplied it by four. Um, you don't have to do it to each term on the left side because this will already be times by the parentheses. So another weird thing that is like, to me, not common sense, but. Just multiply it for this, because it will already be multiplied by that later. Then what's 4.5 times 4? Four? 4.5 times 4 is what class? 18. And then there's an x there to make sure you see the x That. So far, it doesn't even match one of my answer options, so it looks like I have to still keep going from there. Um, now I would have to distribute this three. 
which is a bit easier than distributing in three fourths, but I would really prefer distributing in three fourths. But anyway, what's three times two X? Six X was three times eight. Now let's see, does that look like any of them? Yeah, I'm not like the problem. But anyway, let's just keep going. That's what they did, and that's what you'll see tomorrow. But multiply by one of the denominators to make it no longer a fraction. All right, but anyway, keep solving. You'll want to get the x's on one side. I recommend move the x term that is smaller. That way it's less likely you'll have to work with negatives. So I would move the 6x. When I say move, you have to cancel it on one side and then do that same thing on the other side. So how would I cancel a 6x? Yeah, how would I cancel it? And then when we go one side of each side, I get 24 equals 18x minus 6x is 12x. Opposite of multiplying 12 is whatever you are on one side. And what does x end up equal? So that's what your final step should be when it's fully solved. Let me see what they were trying to do. It's so weird that they make this a drag and drop. I'm not a fan. So let's see. Yeah, I might even delete this. I don't know. But let's see how they marked it. I won't delete it, but I'll just um show you what it's gonna be. So it looks like they put the first one as this and the second one as this one. So they mul so in this one, they multiplied by the reciprocal on each side to fully get rid of the entire thing, which is an option you can do, but there's so many different ways to solve. I say your best bet is to distribute first. Even if it's a fraction, you can use your calculator to do the fraction. And then uh, from there, you combine like terms, put the variable on one side, then continue isolating that. So questions on this one? Okay, any questions from either study guide? John? Okay. Remember, you all need to get 80% or higher. And it'd be better if you did it without cheating because then you'd be more secure for the test tomorrow. Okay, so 15. You're comparing the rate of change. What's another word for a rate of change? Slope. So you're comparing the slopes of these two different representations. So one of them is a table. And when it's a table, it's probably not as easy to do rise over run. So I would suggest use the other slope formula, which is this, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's the same thing as rise over run, but this works more if you have coordinates, not like a graph. So to use this, you just pick one of your coordinates to be x1, y1. So I'll pick the first set, x1, y1, and then pick another one to be x2, y2, like that. So it doesn't really matter as long as the x's are your x's and the y's are your y's. And then pair them x1, y1, x2, y2. So the way that I labeled it this way, my y2 is 4, my y1 is 0, my x2 is 9, my x1 is 2. What's 4 minus 0? What's 9 minus 2? So my rate of change for the first one is 4 over 7. And then 
And then for a graph, what's probably easier to use for when it's a graph? You so at this y intercept I wouldn't necessarily use. Oh, rise over run. Rise over run is what I would use if it's a graph. Now to do that effectively, pick two points that you could clearly see. Not all the time do they point those out to you, but you could use the ones that they pointed out. These are easy to see without having to estimate. Like I wouldn't want to pick, I don't know, this one because like I would have to estimate it and I don't want to do that. But pick two points. If you can draw it on paper, then I suggest maybe triangle. Otherwise, like visualize the triangle and count your rise and your rise. And always go from the left point to the right point, like how you read. So if I'm having to go up, that means my rise should be positive. And what is my rise for this? Four. Good. One, two, three, four. And then my run, it should always be positive. Uh, what is my run for this one? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then you would also put the rate of change for this one is also four sevenths. Would you say that one is greater, less than, or are they equal? So then that last piece that you would enter, you would put equals. Questions on that one? I did have to fix the answer earlier. For some reason, it said one half for both, and it's not. It's four seven. So if it marked it wrong, it'll mark it right in a few hours. But it should be four seven. They're equal. Questions on any others? Could be either study guide. Eleven. All right. So which of the following systems has the same solution as that one? So what you need to figure out first is what's the solution to this one. How you do it is up to you. If you're taking a timed test, what do you think might be the easiest and less time consuming way? John? Yeah, I wouldn't do that either. And I don't know that it would really work for this one. So, graphing, I think, would be like if I was taking a test, the most quick and effective way for this. So, first, I would need to, and you will have Desmos on your test. So if you don't know how to use Desmos, I would tune in because then you'll at least get some problems right on your test. First, we need to figure out what that solution is. So to do that, you type it in. It does not have to be rearranged to slope intercept form, which is nice. You type it in exactly how it looks. If they use something other than X and Y, you just need to change it to X and Y. The Desmos will only read Xs and Ys. And then in another row, Type in your other equation. How do I know where my solution is? Where would my solution be? Oh. Not your y-intercepts. Oh, um, where, where they intersect would be your solution to the system. So it looks like this one has a solution of 4, 3. I'm, I'm just labeling it so I remember it. Four, three, you can click on it. It lets you, it's really nice. Now I need to see which other ones have the same solution as that. John? You think it's the first option? Okay, so let's see. So I, I labeled my point just so I can kind of keep track of it. I'm gonna erase these other lines. But if it, crosses the two lines at that point, then I found my answer. So let's see. I mean, one of them is exactly the same as the equation, so that makes it a bit easier. Do they intersect at 4, 3? So then I would pick that one. Well, let me make sure that's the only one that's right 
possibly. Yep, and it is. But the other ones, if you check them, will not intersect at that point. That's why they're not the solution. So questions on this one? Questions on others? We might have time for one, maybe two more, depending on how long it is. Okay. So Julio wants to solve the system using the elimination method. What's the best way to begin? So that's why we bothered to teach you all the methods, even though graphing might be the easiest with a graphing calculator, because you get questions like this. So could I solve by elimination? So adding or subtracting the way that it looks right now. Okay, so then adding them together or subtracting them would eliminate one of the variables. So then I'm not going to pay over this option. Um, that would not be the best way to begin because that would not eliminate the variable. Then what would you have to do if you wanted to eliminate? Make the coefficients more like. And it's up to you. What do you think would be easier? Would it be easier to get the X's with the same number in front or the Y's? Okay, I agree the X's. Because if it was the Y's, then I'd have to multiply the top one by seven and the bottom one by 12. That's a lot of work. But if it's the X's, I just have to multiply the top one by what? Four or a negative four, it's up to you. Um, if you do a four, then you would add them together to eliminate. If you do a negative four, then you have to subtract. Either one works. But let's see your answer options. Um, I don't know if it's no solution or not. I have to check, but usually that's not your first step is knowing the answer. So I'm just not going to that one. Uh, multiplying each term in the top equation by four and then adding it together to the original equation. I would pick that one because if I multiply the top one by a four, they have opposite signs and adding them would eliminate them. Down here, if I multiply it by a negative four, I'd actually have to subtract them. Because remember, if it's the same sign, you subtract it negative four minus a negative four equals zero. All right, if you do negative four plus negative four, that equals negative eight, that wouldn't cancel out it. So that's why you should take the one that says multiply by four, then add it together. Second on this one. All right, we might have time for one more, depending on how quick it is. Anyone else? Ryan? 16. Okay, so the equation below is the standard form of a linear equation. We want the equivalent one. So look at your answer options. What's alone in the answer options? The Y. So basically, if I can get the Y alone, I found my answer. So start with what you're given, AX plus BY equals C, and we want to isolate the Y. The steps are the same even when A, B, and C are all numbers, by the way, but um, I'll show you. So when you're isolating Y, start with what's farther. Would that be the AX or the B? How do I cancel the AX? And whatever you do on one side of the equal sign. Okay, so that gets me to by, so I'm still not alone with the y. Are these like terms on the other side? No. No. But if you notice, they do have the x term first in all the answer options. So I will just write the x term first. Still keep the negative because the sign that's in front of it stays with it. Um, and still keep the C positive. But they're not like terms you can't combine. Now for the B, how would I cancel the B? 
whatever you do on one side. And remember to do it from each term on the other side. And I get y equals, can I simplify anything over here? Which answer option best matches what's over here? On my screen, it's A. It's probably shuffled on yours. But um, yeah, it has the x term is negative, A over B. And the y-intercept, because we basically turned it to slope-intercept form, is a positive C over B. Questions, comments, concerns? All right, so then if you have more questions, make sure you email me the test is tomorrow. You should be shooting for an 80% or higher on both. Oh, sorry. So close. <laughs>